Smile real big, look at your neighbor, see if they're in faith this morning. Hallelujah. You say, how do you, how do you know if you're in faith? Somebody smile. If you're in faith, you're smiling. Can't be depressed and in faith at the same time. It, it just don't work like that. You, if you're in faith, uh, you, you're going to have a smile. You're going to have an attitude of, of victory on the inside. Hallelujah. And that Jesus is Lord. Worst case scenario, a couple of more breaths and we're out of here. Meaning eternity with Jesus. That's a long time. James says your life is just like a vapor. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, and when it comes to things or stuff, your life doesn't consist in, in what you have or what you don't have. It consists in knowing who you are in God. And so knowing who you are is very important, meditating on who you are. And so uh, we've been teaching. God really put it in my heart to, uh, uh, and it's been growing, talk about our, our life in connection with our mind. Uh, you ever heard kind of like your world is, is connected to what's going on up here right between your ears? Uh, Joyce Meyer, I think, has a book called The Battlefield of the Mind. Everything uh, that you're having to deal with, thoughts. I had, a, I had an awesome thought this week. I, I actually posted it on my Facebook. Your, your greatest mistakes, your greatest fa failures in life will come because you didn't take a thought captive, a wrong thought captive. See, if you don't take a wrong thought captive to the obedience of Christ, it can mess you up. So we're going to talk about thoughts coming up. We're, uh, we've been teaching uh, this series. We're calling it Your Mind, Your Life. What's going on up here? Your mind is connected. Uh, so many uh, with your, your brain is connected to your, your, uh, your respiratory system. Your brain is connected to your digestive system. Your brain is connected to all kind of your immune system. You know, what you're thinking on and what you allow and the thoughts that you allow, it determines chemicals that are released in your body. We're going to talk a lot more about that when we get to thoughts and stuff, but I'm really, I started this out really just wanted to hammer the importance, because we can talk about things, but if you don't get this first part down about the importance of meditating on the Word, uh, we're going to miss it. Because we don't get something just because we hear something. Uh, remember Psalm 1, it's a very popular psalm, Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, walking in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits, says walking, standing, sitting, or sits in the seat of the scoffer. But then verse 2 says, but his delight, say his delight. His delight is in the law of the Lord. You can talk about the word of God. In the law, in, in his delight. Do you, if, we, if we just talked about our Bibles, how many of you could really honestly say this morning, I delight reading my Bible? Picking up the word of God. Or maybe it's on your phone, whatever. I mean, this, this is a day, you know, you can have, you can have, 15 translations just on your phone. Quick access to it. So it's really not an excuse for not reading it. But, but if you really, how, do you really delight in the Word of God, in the Bible? See, the problem that the world has right now and what society has right now is we're really having trouble discerning, is this the final authority? See, you got a lot of people that, well, I believe this. and I, Well, listen, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, with your Bible, uh, the Word of God is the final authority. So if it doesn't agree with this, it doesn't matter if you feel it. Oh, well, I just, well, I just feel like it's okay. Yeah, but if the Bible says it's not, you're wrong. If the Bible says don't sleep with a married woman, don't do it. If the Bible says don't sleep with a married man, don't do it. If the Bible says don't steal, don't steal. If the Bible says don't lie, don't lie. If the Bible says walk in love, you walk in love. Because it affects and what's going on in our brains and what's happening in our minds, the thoughts and the images and we're going to talk about image and, and concepts and the, because they, they're, they're forces, they're, they're, they're strongholds, good or bad. You could call it a fortress. People got fortresses up in here and in their bodies. And those, those fortresses determine whether or not they open or yielding themselves to cancer or disease or sickness. Anger, all these things. These are things that we have to deal with. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. But again, he said in verse 2, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law, now, well, listen, he meditates. Meditates. Everybody say meditate. Meditates day and night. Everybody say day and night. So uh, there's a purpose for the word. You are to meditate on it. Day and night, that means really you're thinking about it. Now, meditate means to mutter. We've talked about our very first message. Now, we, all the messages are available on our website, YouTube. You can go there, watch it. But we talked about how the cow 
you know, just chews grass, swallows it. I think it's called, is it called congelation or something? I don't know, something like that. Anyway, they bring it back up. Anybody, does that sound familiar, you know? Anybody know? Cow eats that grass, swallows it, chews it up, swallows it, brings it back up. Chews it, what? Regurgitate? No, I don't know. I, that, that's similar. Anyway, but, but he's just working it until finally it's just, it, beca- it doesn't come back up anymore. And we're to meditate on the word, delight, meditate on it day and night to where it actually becomes a part of us. That, that it's just natural for when a situation arises, you just respond. We call it our platform of response. You just respond to what the word says. And if you don't, and the world's trying to pull you, and the world says, this is okay, and the world says, well, this is okay, or you can do this, and this is all right, the word has to be the standard. And the problem is that the, even churches, you got the Church of England, I just know the Church of England is, you know, all different, different branches or now condoning, you know, uh, transgender uh, marriages and, and who, can be a, who can be a pastor and who can't. You had all this mess going on instead of just reading the Bible that it says God made Adam and Steve. No, he didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. So anyway, his delight's in the law, Lord. He meditates day and night. Now watch this. And he will be like a tree, like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Planted. Remember last week we were talking about Jesus used the picture of the wise man who built his house, who hears the word. Everybody hears the word. Everybody has the same opportunity to hear the word. And the one who hears the word and, and, and puts it into practice and begins to do the word is like the wise person is the one who built his house upon the rock. Foolish person just hears the word, never integrates it, just, just comes to church, never, never really gets it down on the inside. How many know it's what you digest that works in you, that benefits you? You know, you can eat food and throw it up. You got bulimia, you just eat it and throw it back up. You know, there's people that do that. Ladies, mostly, mostly, I'd say mostly a women issue, but there's probably maybe some men there. But they get that problem where they eat food and they just, well, listen, that's not going to help you. Because it's what you digest, it's what you ingest that begins to work, you know, get in you. That, that you know, if it's nourishment, it's going to help you. But the word, when we do that, and we just meditate on it day and night, day and night, day and night, and it begins to do something on the inside of us. And we're like a tree. And Jesus said that one who hears and doesn't do is like a foolish person who built this house on the sand. So then back here, he said, when you're delighting in the word day and night, you're like a tree planted, planted, planted by the rivers of living water. That means you're in a position you can get nourishment on a regular basis. And his leaf shall not wither. And, what, and then it goes on, and finally it says, and what's, whatever this person does, they prosper. They prosper. Why, how come whatever they do prospers? Because whatever they do is connected to the word. Because they just do things in line with the word. When you do things in line with the word, it prospers you. It blesses you. It helps you. It, like we talked about again in our first couple of messages, it profits you. When you mix faith with what you hear, it profits you. We have an illustration. The children of Israel, what they heard, they didn't mix faith with it, so it didn't profit them. They didn't do anything with what they heard. We have to take, it's not just hearing a message, it's not just getting some notes, but it's thinking about it, meditating on it. How can I put this into practice in my life? How, it, am I doing it? Am I doing it? So we have to be thinking, are we, now we've been talking for five weeks now, t- today. Are, are we meditating on the Word? Are we taking time to think on the Word? Meditate on the Word do, so we can do the Word. Christianity is based really on, on the, the, the key is the doing. Coming, hearing, and doing. Coming, hearing, and doing. I mean, that's really, you want, you want some steps to building a successful life. Hear the word, do the word. If you went over to, uh, Jesus even said the same thing. You know, he said, uh, when he's talking about hearing and doing the word. James says, a hearer of the word. And a doer of the word is like a man who looks in a mirror, makes the adjustments. And he goes on to say, and whatever he he looks intently into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer. This person is blessed in everything they do. So you're blessed. Psalm 1 says you're blessed if you do. James says you're blessed if you do. Jesus said the one who's doing my word and building their house, they're going to be blessed in what they do. And Joshua says you're going to be prosperous and have good success because you're doing the word. We'll get over there here in just a little bit because I've got to go back over that way. But it's important that we understand the difference between success and failure is, is really boils down to the doing. Do you come, do you hear, and do you do? Some people just come, and some people just come and hear. 
don't do, but it's coming, hearing, and doing. But, you know, the bottom line, you know, everybody's going to have storms. You're going to have challenges. You're going to have trials. Everybody say storms. And the storms reveal uh, whether or not you came, heard, and did. Or you came, heard, and do. Storms just reveal it. Storms simply reveal how deep your foundation is. Because you want to develop your foundation. That's what meditation, meditation, just reading the Word. Uh, just keep looking at it. Keep reading it. Keep going over it. Uh, and, and really, to meditate means to mutter, so you're putting it in your mouth. We're going to talk a little bit more about that coming up because I really want to solidify some things. But listen, when the storms of life come, uh, they cannot collapse you if you hear and do. I said they cannot collapse you. You know who your source is, no matter what the situation, what's going on. And if you collapse in the storms, then it's obvious that you didn't do. Matter of fact, one of the Proverbs says, if you faint in the day of adversity, there wasn't much to you to begin with. No fainting. Look at your neighbor and say, no fainting. So, storms reveal the real you. I mean, anybody can talk the talk, but as long, you know, as long as, uh, long as nobody's under pressure, then, then we can talk real big, right? But when the pressure's on, what you do demonstrates how good your foundation is. Again, because you've developed a platform of response. Now, go over to Luke 16 this morning. I have this passage on my heart. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to encourage you this morning. I may, I may just shout a little bit. How many can shout with me this morning? What do you mean? Because I, I really uh, want to impress some things here. Um, well, it's just important. Jesus here in, in Luke, the 16th chapter, he is dealing with the subject of an unrighteous man. Uh, and it's a picture of stewardship, and he compares it with, uh, with faithful people or faithful stewards. Verse 1, now he was also saying to the disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward, and this steward reported to him as squandering his possessions. And he called him and he said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. And the steward said to himself, what shall I do since my master's taken the stewardship away from me? In other words, this is not a good situation. He's fixing to, get, he's fixing to lose his job. I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I'm removed from the stewardship, they will receive me into their homes. In other words, he's got a plan. I know what I'm going to do. And he summoned each one of the master's debtors, and he began saying to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and write 50. So what's he doing? He's got a plan here. He's like, all right, he owes this much, so we're going to just sit down and cut this thing in half. Let's get, something, let's get something moving here. Verse 7, then he said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. And his master, now the master, the one who, who came to say, okay, you got to give an account. We'll take the master praised the unrighteous steward. Come on, say he praised the unrighteous steward. So now the unrighteous steward is getting praise because he acted uh, shrewdly or let's just say wisely. Another word for shrewdly is wisely. He acted wisely. And then he said, for the sons of this age are more shrewd in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. Now, that is not uh, what we would call, um, what's the word I'm looking for when you're trying to help somebody? A compliment. This, this would not be a compliment for the sons of light. Did you catch that last statement? He said, the sons of this age are more, in other words, he's just talking about people in the world. Because if you're not a sons of light, you're in the dark. So he says, the sons of this age are more shrewd or more wise in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. So the master praises the unrighteous steward because he deals more wisely. He's deal, all of a sudden he says he's dealing more wisely than the sons of light. Now, most people, I mean, when I say... Uh, for, uh, as a, as a majority, they get frustrated over the world system. They don't like, they get frustrated over their job, over their pay, over their salary. And the best advice you can take is what Brody was telling you a while ago. Don't get your eyes on that. Get your eyes on God. Get your eyes on making sure you're doing the will of God and doing the word. And you'll be blessed no matter what you're doing. Because when you're blessed, everything you put your hands to will be blessed. So if you go sell dead chickens, you can get blessed. 
It's just a matter of, it's all up here, what you can see. It's all about what you can see. Well, I just, I just don't know if I can do that. Be the little red truck. I know I can't, I know I can't. Little red, remember that little red engine? Think I can. Yeah, well, it starts with thinking and then saying. All right? But, but people get upset, you know, and, and this world system. You have to understand, this system that, that in the world right now has, was never designed to succeed. Do you understand that? Does anybody have a clue right now with our financial system that you make 2% on your savings? If you've got a savings account at the bank and you make 2%, inflation is 3 to 4%, so add that up. Are you going in the hole? Are you really saving anything? Did you catch that? It's designed, and everything's moving towards the end, you know, to where, you know, they, they, they're wiping out the middle class and doing their way, you know, going to this cashless society. I mean, I don't know how many years it's going to take to do all that stuff. I'm, Jesus is coming soon. But it's all, we're all getting set up for the end, y'all. You understand? And you have to buy, and, you have to take the mark of the beast in order to buy and sell during the tribulation period. You don't want to be here. I mean, we don't talk a whole lot about it because we ain't going to be here. If you're saved, but if you're not saved, you need to get saved. But how can, it, how can it come to a point? How many know, just wasn't a few years ago, we didn't have cell phones. But now everything is on our cell phone. You, you can pay. I go to Starbucks and flash my little card, pff, you know, beep, and it paid. You almost think, man, that was kind of free, but it really ain't. Because you either got blessed with a card and you loaded it in there or, or whatever, you know. But it's moving that way. I, I've just read a deal that they're, they're trying to do away with $500 bills. You won't see them hardly at all. And they're working on 100, so getting to work. Anyway, how do I get off on all that? Anyway, the system, the system, this system was, the system that we're in, I mean, it's just a, it's just a big man. Everything's just moving towards, you need to know Jesus, and he will give you wisdom to live above the system. That's what you need to know. Working above the system, all right? This world system can't succeed. I mean, it's decaying right now. It's failing right now as we speak. It is, it is not helping. It. The system, the world system is not helping anybody. So you've got to outsmart the system. How many feel like you could just outsmart the system? With God, you can. I said with God, you can. There, there's a system that God has established and I'm not going to really take time to go there, but it's a system called seed time and harvest. That's God's system. You understand? And, and, and that's called God multiplying your seed. Multiplying your seed for sowing. It is a system that you can take something in the natural, put it, because it's spiritual, it's connected to your heart. And when you do something with it, God brings it back to you, multiplied. But see, we don't meditate on it long enough to figure out how the system works. Well, I just don't. I, I, I. Yeah, it takes faith. It takes faith to slot, to man, put that 10 grand in the offering container when it goes by. Woo! And you're wondering what you're going to drive next. That's faith. I don't mean everybody's supposed to do that. You understand? You, you can work that system and live in this system and not feel the decay of this system. I said, you can work God. It's called the kingdom system. Jesus said, what? Seek first, what? The kingdom. His right way of doing things, and all these things will be added unto you. How many like to just get some stuff added to you? But the unrighteous man, he, he learned how to work the system in a sense that, hey, if I make friends, and that's what he's doing. I'm making friends here. If I lose my job, I go to them because I help them out, and I need help. They're going to help me. They're, they're going to invite me into their home. See, he's being smart. And so he took the time. He understood. So he's meditating on it. He's getting a plan, and he worked it, and it paid off. And now so to, the, to the point that it doesn't tell us that he got fired. It just says the, 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 the master praised the unrighteous steward for his actions. And Jesus said the unrighteous are wiser than the sons of light. This world, this word, the word of God reveals the system that we're to live in. And the children of light, like I said, we've got to figure out, know how, how God's system works and do it. So, matter of fact, I really didn't want to go there, but I'm going to read it anyway. I won't have it on the screen. Verse 9, Jesus went on to say, and I say to you. In other words, he's talking to his people here. He says, so I say to you, make friends for yourselves by means of the mammon of unrighteousness. He's just talking about money. Make friends with money. 
Think about that. He said make friends with money. Unrighteousness means money has no uh, righteous or unrighteous. It's just, it's, just it's just part of the system. It takes money to operate in the system. You, you, you gotta pay your bills with, with it, you know, out of your checking account. So he says make friends by the means of mammon of unrighteous, that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. What's he talking about? He said, you can take what you have right now, and when you give it and it helps other people, you're going to step into heaven, my brother, my sister. You're going to step into heaven, and somebody's going to go, whoo, come over because you gave, because some, you were doing something eternal. Come over to my, I, I, I got to meet you. That's what he's talking about. So he says, verse 10, now listen, he says, he who is faithful. So he's talking about wisdom, learning to be faithful. He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. He who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. If therefore you, now listen, this, this, nobody likes this verse, so you don't read it a whole lot. If therefore you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous mammon, if you're not faithful in money, that's what Jesus is saying. If you haven't been, because we're stewards, if you're not faithful with money, who will entrust to you the true riches? Well, I can tell y'all are real excited about this one this morning. It's quiet in this Pentecostal house here. Who will it, listen, he said, if you're not faithful with money, if you can't operate off a dollar, how are you going to operate on something bigger, more, more spiritual? Being faithful. Everybody say faithful. And he says, and if you've not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? In other words, when you have responsibility on your job, your, your responsibility, number one, is to make that company money. Be faithful with your assignment. Be faithful. Don't worry, they don't pay me right nothing. They don't pay me enough to do what they call me to do. Yeah, that's why you're never going to get a promotion. Because you had not learned to meditate on the word and realize, you know what, God is my source. And I do, I do my work as unto the Lord, and he's my promoter. And if I'm doing that and I'm meditating on the Word, he'll put me past everybody else that was, that was, that was due. They thought they were going to get it, and guess what? I got it. <laughs> you follow me? He's, and then he says, he wraps it up with no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God. And, and he ends it with, with mammon. In other words, you've got to make sure you're serving one. You can't serve both. You've got to serve God. And when you're serving God, you're choosing to be faithful. And, and, that's, and, and that's using wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. All right? So I didn't mean to, I just thought I'd throw it. The sons of light haven't taken time to meditate on how to work the principles. Let me just say this. Write this down. The kingdom that you're the strongest in is the kingdom that you run to in challenge. What are you, what are you stronger in? What do you have more confidence in? The kingdom that you run to or that you're strongest in is the kingdom that you're going to run to in challenge. So many people, what happens, they get delivered from sin, but they don't get prepared to live, live in righteousness. That's where the meditation comes from. That's where reading the Word of God comes in. We get delivered from sin. It's like the children of Israel. They got delivered out of Egypt, but God had trouble getting Egypt out of them and getting them to trust God and mix faith with what they heard. In other words, they had, they had this slave mentality. We've got to get a mentality out of us that we're children of God. Our Father in heaven owns everything, a cattle on a thousand hills, and you are the, most, the closest, dearest thing to his heart. And he will not withhold anything from you. If earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children, whoo, you ought to just shout, go, how much more shall my heavenly Father give good gifts to me when I just ask? you got to get bold about asking. Everybody say asking. So the only way really you can prepare is to meditate on your salvation. You know, this is part of our salvation. 2 Timothy 3.15 says the Scripture makes us wise unto salvation. Everybody say wise. Can you be, wise? Can you be dumb unto salvation? Yeah, it's called you don't know what you have. You're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Wise. Everybody say wise. Wise unto salvation. You see, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. If you've been walking with God, His Word, His Word has gotten me to where I am right now. And it'll be His Word that gets me to where I'm going. Because you, keep, you, just keep, you just keep growing and thinking about the Word. I mean, I experienced His Word years back. You hit a difficult time, and man, you just got to go to the Word. And, you, and God strengthens you in the Word. And then, and then you, I'm, I'm experiencing His Word right now. I mean, just keep going back, keep looking. Man, it's amazing. About the time you just, you know, man, you're just like, Lord, I need something. And here he comes with, with something. Because you're looking. 
And now I got adventures waiting up ahead for me. You do too. Because of the word. All right? Write this down. When you meditate on the word of God, you preview your future. Oh, I like that. When you meditate on the word of God, you preview your future. I'm going to say that again. When you meditate on, when you're thinking about, you're muttering, you're going over the word, you preview your future. Now, if you meditate and you keep thinking on what the devil is putting up there, you're also previewing your future. Are you here? I mean, come on, think. You go to the movies right now. I just went to the movie just recently this last week, and they're already advertising stuff five, six, eight months down, down the road. You think, oh, well, that's pretty cool. I want to see that when that comes out. They're already previewing months. And so when you meditate on the Word, you're previewing what, what things are supposed to be happening, what's happening for you. Every time you start meditating on the Word of God, you're painting a portrait of your future. You're, you're building something on the inside. That's why some people have no hope, because they read the Bible, and all they can see is their present. They're, all they, they, just, all they, they can't, get, they can't they're, they're just battling, okay, I, that's all I'm focused on. They just keep looking at or their past. You got to know the word works. I said, you got to know the word works and you meditate on it so you can do it. And it doesn't matter what you've been going through, what you're dealing with, how great it is. The word says, if you give, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So, man, that's not, not, even when it gets tight, now you ask my wife, did you, did you send out the missions? That's probably the biggest thing that I deal with on her because she's dealing with the finance, what's going on. And it's like, well, we got bills. And, and when I said, did you send out the, and she didn't know. And I said, I'm, I'll walk in the office. I said, send this out because this is a lot. This is our church. This, this is the lifeline. Our giving the missions and other ministries because it's not dependent upon you. I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's an element of that, but you understand, God knows how to bring it in lots of ways or, or bless you. I pray, I've been praying that more, more. Listen, if you get something good, you need to thank God, thank me for praying for you because I've been praying for you that you're, you're receiving some supernatural stuff. I said, I've been praying, I've been praying for you like never before. God bless them, give them a bonus, give them an increase, give them, you're blessing the church, you're, you're blessing them. Everybody say, I'm blessed. Say, thank you, Lord. Pastor, prayers works. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you, you, you got to get excited about the word. You got to get a picture of your healing. What do you mean? You're meditating on it. He bore my sicknesses and he carried all my pains. It don't happen after you just li- think about it once. And then you try to go on and now you're thinking about the situation again. No, it's moment by moment by moment. He bore my sicknesses and he carried my pains. And by his stripes I'm healed. He sent his word and healed me, delivered me from all my destruction. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes I'm healed. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is with me. Bless the Lord, forget not all his benefits. Who forgives me of all my iniquities and heals me of all my diseases. Black, first Peter, I mean, you just, and you just meditate on it. And you think about it. And you think about it. And you meditate on it. And then when something tries to come up, you go, oh, I know, I know you, you got something. You got a platform of response. You already know what your future's like. Blessed, healthy, strong. You preview your future. And we do that through meditating on the Word of God. Meditating on the Word of God. Heavenly meditation produces a prosperous destination. Say that one again. Heavenly meditation produces a prosperous what? How many like to end, end up in a good spot? Well, it's going to be because what you're meditating on. Your greatest failures because, will come because you didn't take a wrong thought, a wrong imagination captive. I'm going to say that again. Your greatest failures, downfalls, mistakes, mess-ups, goof-ups, whatever you want, will be because you did not take a thought, wrong thought, captive to the obedience of Christ. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but uh, it's, this is so important. All right, let's close with Joshua. Go to Joshua chapter 1. When you... When you when you start meditating on the Word of God, it's like bridging a gap between knowledge and action. I started talking about the bridge to a successful life here. We're talking about meditating this morning. Meditating on the Word builds the bridge between knowledge and action. Everybody say that out loud. Meditating on the Word builds the bridge. Between knowledge and action. See, sometimes you, you can know stuff, but you're not doing it. 
It's, James says, you can, you, the guy, here's the word. S- looks in the mirror. That does it, looks in the mirror, sees adjust, things that need to be changed. That means you know about it. But walks away, doesn't make the adjustment, doesn't make changes. That's, that man is a, is a forgetful hearer, not an effectual doer. You can know and not do. And the key is doing what you're meditating on. What you're meditating on. Again, it's like this Bible. The Word of God. That's what we meditate on. That's what you meditate on. The Word. Think on it. Think on it. Galatians Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for me. For it is written, cursed is every man that hangs on a tree. That in Christ Jesus. How many of you in Christ this morning? That in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham would come upon the Gentile. How many of you know, do you even know what the blessing of Abraham is? God made a covenant with Abraham. Blessed his socks off. And the Bible says, because you are in Christ. That's, that's part of just what you got by being in Christ. You have Abraham's blessing available for you. And it comes by faith, which means you got to know what it is. And call it in. And claim it. That's mine. And when the devil tries to come with something different, you say, no, you don't, devil. No, I'm blessed. I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. See, the world will try to tell you, the devil will try to tell you you're cursed. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's the, no, no, no. I'm blessed. And I call myself blessed. Help me understand, God speaks to us from a realm called eternity. We speak to him from a realm called time. God, God's outside of this, this box or whatever. It's just a different realm. Eternity. That's why we get impatient. Impatience will affect your faith. You understand? Let, let me just say, you know, God, I, I believe one day our faith will be more developed to the point. I was thinking about this recently. I think I, I shared it with my mom. Uh, think about God. The Bible says have the faith of God. Now remember, where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. As we're growing in our faith level, we go from faith to faith. But, but God, in the beginning, just said, light be. And think about it. When God says light be, God didn't have to explain it and tell it how to be. He already had this inner image on the inside of everything that light was to do, everything that light was to produce, and it only took two words to accomplish it. Light be. He already had, he spoke it, and it was. I mean, think about it. Just one phrase started this whole world, and, and the Holy Spirit was hovering, and he helped out, but, but I, 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 I would uh, probably be safe to say one phrase could end it all, too. God looks at Jesus and says, go. It's time. And it's done. I mean, we're on here. So, God knows the power of words, and that's why he tells you and I, if we'll, if we'll talk to mountains, they'll move. So, that means if we meditate on the word, we can meditate and get so strong on the word, and we're, in other words, to the, to where, where the word and us are inseparable. We meditate to the point that it is so much in us, just like, remember, the word, Jesus is the word, and the word was made flesh, dwelt among us. I mean, it's such a, the word incarnate, you could say. In other words, we get the word in us. It's such a part of us that you just look at a mountain and it'll tremble for fear that you might say something to it. You get so full, you get so full of that like, that, like God does. And I was thinking about Jesus. Think about this. Jesus, the Bible says when he comes back, after the end of the tribulation, seven years, and he comes to this earth and there's an army surrounded to come to fight against him, dummies trying to come to fight. And the Bible says, with his word, the, the sword of the word that just comes out of his mouth wipes out the whole army. Talk about some power in your word. Development. I mean, God's so developed in faith in the word and what he says, he just speaks. Bam. Bye-bye. And we're supposed to develop to the point in our faith and in our, our meditation on the word that the word becomes such a part of us. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it will be done. 
How I many? In other words, you because you just you ask right in line with His will. His word is His will. But you're developed. Everybody say developing. Now again, we're all going to be in different different developmental stages and places, just like kids and people that are growing different different ages. But we're growing. And developing, and you don't have to be old before you get to, you can be young and man, just, you, you're so developed. Because you started at a different point. Our kids should start, our, your kids in this church, they should start at, they should come up totally higher at a different level. And they will, and are. Hallelujah. But we, what happened, we're too flippant with our words. We're, our, our confession, we, when you and I meditate on the word of God, we build a bridge between where we are and where we need to be. Where do you need to be? Well, you find out, oh, this is where I, the word says this. Oh, this is where I need to be. And so I start meditating so it'll take me the bridge. I can get to, I can get to where I need to be. It's where I need to be. How I many there's some places we need to be? Hallelujah. I said there's some places we need to be. Places we should be. And we might have slowed down a little bit and start coasting a little bit, but you can pick it back up. Hallelujah. How I many know you can get out of any jam? Sam, any jam, but you got you to know this about God. This is important. You got to know this about God. God does not help you and cause you to escape just to take you out of where you are. God, God doesn't really think like that. Usually when we start trying to meditate on something, it's because we're trying to get out of a jam. Come on, let's be honest. Usually, and I'm going to talk a little because I'm, I'm going to go somewhere about developing our shield of faith because you don't do it in the storm. You don't do it in the battle. But, but we start trying to meditate so we can get out of a jam. And God doesn't want you to meditate on how to get out of a jam. He wants you to meditate on the Word because the Word has the wisdom that you need in any situation. The Word does. All right? The Word builds the bridge to get you to where you need to be. God always thinks about you in terms of where you're supposed to be, not where you're at. You got that? I said, God thinks about you in terms of where you're supposed to be, not where you're at. That's why people say, well, you just need to like me the way I am. And blah, blah, blah. No, listen, well, God loves you the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the way you are or where you are. He wants to take you up. He has a future, an expected end for you. Hallelujah. So when a problem or a challenge or a tragedy comes in our life, God is not as much concerned about what it's doing to your life as much as it is hindering you from what you should be doing. Really, that's why the enemy, you know, really the enemy, what he's trying to do is hinder us from what we're supposed to be doing. Paul said, three, I tried to come to you, but hey, Satan hindered us. He thwarted us. And so many times, that's what he, he's just trying to keep you from you Hitting full potential. Maximum potential. How many like to just hit maximum potential? Wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, if Jesus tarries, somebody just looked at you and go, oh. And you're just going, we're kicking in. We're, in, we're hitting maximum potential here. As much as we can with what we know, with what we have, and we're excellent, and we're faithful, and we're servants, and we're, you understand what I'm saying? You, you get a picture of those things. That that's how my life is supposed to be and how my life will be. Everybody say, will be. Hallelujah. So God, what happens is he'll, he'll cause a way of escape to get you somewhere. See, when you're in a jam, he causes the way of escape. Not just to, oh, because, oh, well, I'm hurting and, and I don't want to see him hurting. No, no, it's to get you somewhere. When Daniel is in the lion's den, God's not just trying to shut up the lion. He says, there's a leader right here and I'm going to use this man. When David's out fighting lions and bears and out with the sheep, it's like, oh, I'm not, you know, going through difficult challenges and running from Saul. It's because why? There's a king in this man. I'm taking him somewhere. When God brings Abraham out of Ur, he's like, oh, I'm just not, because why? He's going to be a father of many nations. He's taking us somewhere. And so when stuff's going on, our meditation and what we're trying to do, it's not just, oh, well, I, just, I just need to get out of this. No, it's because God... It's trying to keep you from being hindered and to make you all that you're called to be. In us to will and to work for his good pleasure. Hallelujah. So God's not going to deliver you just because you have a problem. Think about that. You say, well, I got a problem. How about God's not? Because he's not interested in just delivering you just because you got a problem. God sees destiny. God sees future. God sees where you are, where you're supposed to be. 
Got that? And God comes to your rescue, not just because of what's going on, but because he knows what's going to happen once you get back on course. Where are you going? Where are you going? Think about that. Where are you going? Are you going somewhere? How many know if you're on a bus or a train or a plane? How many know you're going somewhere? Well, your body's taking you somewhere. Your mind, here it is, is taking you somewhere. Everybody say, my mind. What's going on in here? It's taking you somewhere. So what you're thinking on on a regular basis is taking you there. It's taking you to Curseville or Blessville. Or leaving you sidelined somewhere. And, it's about, and it can be, your, you can have all excuses. Well, it's, it's, it's my color, or it's my this, or it's my family background, or whatever. See, see most people, they, 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 can't get past, they, they, they can't see the future because they're thinking too much about the past. Or this happened, or this failure, or whatever. And, and no, if you'll start meditating on the Word, and you recognize this. Did I ever tell you, you know, in Joshua, remember, and we'll, we'll wrap this up, we'll close right here. Remember, God told Joshua, meditate on the Word. Three times he said, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Now let me tell you, I'm, some of you don't, may, may know the story. Some of you, I told it recently, I think, in our teaching on how to be led by. But I was meditating on that passage, chapter 1, because I was, gonna, I was supposed to do a big outdoor uh, venue. Our church was another church way back in, when we were on staff in a church in Wheeler, Texas, before we went to Raymond, way back in 1990, in that summer. And we were having a big outdoor out, of, out, of, out on the ranch. Two churches coming together, and my pastor asked me if I wanted to preach since we were going to be leaving. It was kind of like, you know, last hoorah, you know, fixing to head off to Rama. And man, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to bring him a good one. But in the process of, I'm praying, you know, about what am I supposed to preach? What am I supposed to minister? And, uh, and I really got to meditating in Joshua chapter 1 thinking. And I remember one day I was fasting. I went on a three-day fast because, man, I want a word. I want to bring a good word from heaven. And I was over the church praying. Just thinking, and I was thinking about Joshua, chapter 1, and be strong and of good courage. And, and I remember thinking to the Lord, is this what I need to preach? And all of a sudden, it was like the, one of the only times the Holy Spirit yelled at me. When I mean yet, it was like he said, that's for you! I mean, it was like megaphone, just boom. And I'm like, that's for you. What? Now, how many know the word was for us? Listen, you can take any scripture in here, you get med- and you get some light on it. It's for you. God give it, gave us his word to speak it, to meditate on it, to declare it over our life. It's, it's, this word will change you. It'll develop you. He said, that's for you. Well, how many of God knows your future? So I'm meditating. I, didn't quite, well, I ended up preaching on end time. I ended up preaching on Jesus coming back. So I got, well, that's for me. Well, I got to, long story short, I got to Rama, and for two years of struggling and going through Rama and kids and new kid having Benjamin and, and lean and making $4 an hour and three kids and living in the nicest house we'd ever lived in and just believe in God on a daily basis, and I would hit a, I'd hit a wall. Man, I'd see nothing but darkness, and especially first getting started, and because the enemy knows if he can crush an acorn, the, the tree ain't coming. So he tries to hit you the hardest in the beginning when you're trying to get started and trying to get rolling. And, but I would seek the Lord, and every time, every single cotton-picking time, I would go to the Lord about something. I, we got, we, Lord, we got serious issues going on here. We, we got major problems right here. And every time, for two years, when I would go to the Lord, and I'd get quiet, and I'd seek God, the Lord, I need answers, I'd hear, be strong and a good courage. Can't I get something else? <laughs> Is there something else here? Be strong and a good courage. That was life. Every time he'd come back up, it was life. And guess what? I'd go out of that place of prayer. What did God say? Be strong and a good courage. All right, suck it up, buttercup. Be strong and a good courage. We're going to make it. Anything else, Lord? No. We need to meditate on the Word. Meditating on the Word builds the bridge from where we are to where we need to be, and that's the key to a successful life. Did you learn something this morning? Well, we're just getting started in this series. Hallelujah. 
So the question is, is are you going to do it? Are you just, man, you say, well, biggest, biggest challenge that we all have. What do I read? How many heard that one? How many, how many go through that one on a regular basis? What am I, what am I going to read? Come on, don't look at me in that tone of voice. You, you, you know you've been there. You pick it up and you go, hmm, hmm, well, I read that and I, I read that. Just because you read it, <laughs> read it again. But it's always good to get a plan. Read through the Bible, get you a plan, read through, decide, you know, what I'm gonna, or, or get a passage and think, man, get you a passage and just think on it. Find, are you dealing with the situation? Is there a certain, what do you need in your life? Okay, find out what the Word says about it. Go meditate on those things. Discover the life. It is life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say life. That's why Jesus said, the sower sows the Word. And the enemy tries to come and steal the seed of the Word. And out of all those people that hear the Word, he said, you got 25% bearing fruit. Because they didn't hold fast to the word, put it in their heart, hold fast to it, and do something with the word. And really, 30, they've been 30, 60, 100, 40, so you only got about 32.3% bearing 100%, 100 fold from the word. 33 out of the 25%, so, you know, the percentages break down because you got to decide, I'm going to do the word. I'm going to get this thing, I'm going to meditate on this stuff, and I'm going to let it change my life. Hammer it. Take two days and just, man, I'm going to read through the New Testament. You'll come out refreshed. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for the word this morning. <clears throat> thank you for your spirit in this place, Lord. Your word is life. You said in your word, your word, heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never fail. Oh, we thank you for your word. Come on, just lift your hands this morning and say, thank God for his word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word, that your word is transforming us. It will change us. It will renew us. It renews our mind. It transforms us. And, Lord, as we continue in these things, Lord, help us to have a hunger for your word. Like the psalmist said, <clears throat> Lord, your, your word. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great spoil. You have to understand that when you begin to look in the word, you're looking for like the greatest spoil you could ever find. Hallelujah. The entrance of his word getting in you, it gives light. It shows you things. It helps you. So, Lord, we thank you for the word. Hallelujah. Your word says when it comes to the gospel going forth, how can they hear without a preacher? Hallelujah. What does a preacher preach? He preaches the word, preaches the gospel, preaches the good news. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So we thank you for the word this morning that something is working in us when we believe it. You said the word has a, it, it has a supernatural uh, effect to it that begins to do something on the inside of us. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Well, there, while you're here, well, everybody's head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm not right with God this morning. You know, if Jesus was to come back right now, I'm not sure I would go to heaven. Well, we're here to make sure that if you, he comes, you're ready to go this morning. Hallelujah. And if you're not sure this morning, I'm going to give you that opportunity. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and you want to do that this morning right now, and he can change your life, he'll put you on the right track. Hallelujah. That just comes with it. If you've never done that and you'd like to get your heart right with God and receive Jesus, lift up your hand real high right now. Anybody like that in here this morning? Pastor, pray for me. I need to get my life right with Jesus. Anybody like that? I need Jesus as my Lord. God bless you, sir. I see that hand. Anybody else? Pastor, I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Maybe there's somebody in here. Let me just give it. Maybe you've been saved before, but you have been living in your own way, kind of doing your own thing. And messing things up and you don't have peace and life is not right and you need to get your heart right you need to repent and get your heart right with god if that's you lift up your hand real high anybody like that this morning pastor would you include me in this prayer i need to get my heart right with jesus god bless you ma'am i see that anybody else pastor i need to get my i need to i need his forgiveness in my heart this morning i need to be right with jesus anybody else hallelujah praise you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord Praise God. All right, listen, this is what I want to do. Ha, specifically, it's important. There's about three hands over here on this side. So I'm going to ask you to do something. Those of you lifted up your hand right over here. Look up here at me. At me. Look up here. Over here, you guys. I'm going to ask you, just slip out of your aisle, chair. Come up here. Meet me right here because I want to do what I said. I want to pray with you right here. Would you do that? Just be bold. Just come out here. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a big hand. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sir. We're here. God bless you. Just face me right here. Hallelujah. God bless you, man. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You know what I tell people? Number one is if you're not in a good church, you just come here and give me a year of your life and you'll never be the same. Just one year. You'll never be the same. Hallelujah. But when it comes to what Jesus has, it's free. Doesn't cost you anything. He already paid for all of it. Paid for salvation, for deliverance, for freedom. And if I was going to give you my Bible, what would you have to do? You'd have to reach out and receive it. Take it. It'd be like a gift. That's the way salvation is. You just, it's just free. You receive it. It's a free gift. So we've got someone. We have a place of prayer. I have some material that I want you to have. It's got a little booklet called The Road to Destiny. And some information that you'll need. What do you do from this point forward? I'm, I've made Jesus the Lord of my life. Or, or I've rededicated. What do I do now? It's going to tell you. And if you don't have a good church home, this is where you need to be. All right? And you'll grow. All right? Father, I thank you for these people that have come. I thank you today is the day of salvation, and it's a new day that you're doing something in their heart and in their life, and they'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to try and meet these people right behind you. There's somebody right behind you. They're trained to pray with you. See this person right here? And we have a place of prayer. If you'll just follow them, they're going to pray with you, and you're going to get it. If you have a, don't have a Bible, we're going to give you one. And uh, just follow this fellow right down the aisle right there. God bless you guys. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says angels in heaven rejoice when just, just one gets their life right. Hallelujah. Angels in heaven rejoice. Say there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you can't separate him from his word. Come on, say I delight in the word. Come on, say I love the word. Hallelujah. It's wonderful. Well, did you learn something this morning? Man, next week, we got Roy Brock in the house, potluck dinner Sunday night, uh, Vision Sunday. It's going to be a great day next Sunday. Miss Donna is preaching Wednesday night. You don't never, if you haven't heard her preach, oh, man, she's preaching Wednesday night. And they got, uh, we're going to have Taco Villa. I'm giving you all the thunder right there. All right, I'll let Denise tell you about it before you go. And uh, she can dismiss you here in just a moment. Amen. When we came, we heard. Now what do we do? We do. Amen. We'll stand to your feet. As Pastor Brecken said, Wednesday night will be a hot night in the house because you got Pastor Donna preaching and there's Taco Villa Bean and Cheese Burritos in the Harvest Cafe on Wednesday night as well. Service starts at 7 o'clock. You do not want to miss midweek service this week. You guys be blessed. Have an awesome week and we'll see you Wednesday night. You are dismissed.